Welcome back to this already, the final segment of today's Price of Business. I am your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business with Chris Kidd. Always delighted to have him here on the program. He is a regular contributor on the Price of Business, and you can find him not only on this show every week, but over at priceofbusiness.com and at usdatareview.com. Chris, uh, we're in the middle of a great conversation. Why don't you uh, reintroduce our uh, guest today? And by the way, you can learn more about Chris at uh, Chris Kidd, and that's K-I-D-D, Dot com. Well, we've been uh, talking with Keon Carpenter. He's a former NFL player, uh, played uh, a little bit for the Bills, and then played uh, several seasons with the Falcons. And uh, after uh, retirement, has done uh, some really awesome things uh, to help uh, his hometown community uh, in Baltimore. So, uh, Keon, let's uh, kind of, I guess, pick up where we left off. Um we talked about uh, fathers and parents and some things that they can do. What are some things, you know, that, that coaches uh, can do when they see stuff like this? Because one of the things, uh, you might even talk a, a bit about this, but one of the things that uh, you said in your book that really stuck out to me, because we see kids that uh, they may become a ball hog or they may become, you know, somebody who has to score all the time, and it seems like things are just so important uh, to them to where they have to shine uh, and try to make sure that they outshine everybody else. Um, talk a little bit about that feeling that, that you had. And then, uh, you know, after that, uh, some things that some coaches can do uh, with their kids to, that can help them. Well, I think um, especially nowadays, it's a, a, a tremendous amount of pressure that, that are put on children to win. Um, and I think, you know, the fact that youth sports has become a business and not just an outlet for, you know, kids like myself growing up. Um, and I think the coaches get wrapped up in their own personal successes as coaches in youth sports, and they forget about that they're dealing with children who are looking and watching everything that they do. So if if, if you're preaching that winning is the is the only thing, just ima- imagine the amount of pressure that's being put on a seven or eight year old or a nine year old, 10 year old child just to win a meaningless football mm-hmm. game that when this child gets to high school or college, he'll never, I mean, it's, it's not going to matter. So I just think that the coaches need to get back to the old school principles and, 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 and just, you know, use football as a tool to teach life skills. And yes, winning, you know, it, it is it's some, some degree important, but it's not the most important thing in, and that shouldn't the messages of life shouldn't get caught up and lost uh, in a sport uh, that's just supposed to be fun for children. Yeah, it certainly sounds like that, and uh, it's amazing the kind of things we see people injuring one another and attacking one another at these sporting events. What kind of a profound impact is that having on them? It's, it's so embarrassing. I, I, um, I think I truly believe, and I think that youth sports should be governed like. Uh, high school and college, where you have to have a resume, you have to be qualified to be able to coach. I mean, that's just like, you know, just because, you know, you, you know, my kids in elementary school, you you know, you can't just as a human being go into a school and say, I want to go teach math because I, you know, I, I went to elementary and high school and I got a degree and I, and I just want to show up and, and, and teach. No, you got to go through a process. Well, in youth sports, you can just show up with a whistle and, a, and, and, and a, get a shirt and coach just because you may have played 20 or 30 years ago. And I think that that needs to change because it's just getting, it's just getting out of hand. And if our children are our most precious gifts, then why aren't they protected in the sports arena as, as well, just, just like they're protected in the academic arena. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, that's a, a, a great point. And it seems like uh, a lot of, I mean, not just, not just parents, but coaches are trying to live through their players, and I, I guess maybe that's why it seems so important for them that they have to win and they, they lose sight of, like you said, uh, you know, teaching kids, and it, it's a whole lot more than just winning. Um, you know, that that's uh, <laughs> it, it's pretty crazy the way that sports are nowadays, I mean, with especially with these little kids. Yeah, no question yeah, about it. Yeah. I was, I was curious your thoughts about, uh, you know, in, I was even thinking about the Jackie Robinson West, what happened this week uh, with them uh, actually losing their um, championship. Uh, man, what a tragedy. I, I think I, I think that's horrible. Um, I don't believe that kids should be involved 
in grown up business. Um, and I say that to say that those kids just want to play baseball. That's all they want to do. They're not worrying about the rules, the regulations. They're not signing any paperwork that they're being told to do by parents, coaches, or whomever's in charge. So for me to punish some children who had nothing to do with some grown-up decisions, I totally disagree with that. I mean, I was in a similar situation like that even with Shutdown Academy. We had a team to go undefeated but couldn't go to Florida because the, 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 the reps of the league in AAU uh, we didn't get the information to, you know, the information wasn't given to us as an organization to be, to be able to fill it out to make sure our kids had what they needed to go um, to Florida to compete for the Nationals. And the kids didn't, they didn't have a chance to go because some grown-ups made some decisions. I'm just totally against, um, you know, grown folks punishing children um, for some, some decisions and stuff that they should have taken care of and they should have done. I just, I don't agree with that. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> yeah, they. Uh, well, I forgot uh, the question that I was thinking of, but one of the other uh, things in in the book that I wanted to to bring up was uh, the the relationship with with Slim that that you kind of developed, um, and uh, how a, a lot of these uh, kids growing up, especially in in areas uh, you know like the inner city and stuff, and uh, not having a father around or the 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 right you know type of role model necessarily in their life. Um, talk a, a little bit about that. How you can how these kids can get drawn into that. And uh, speaking of well, uh, pressured games, I mean there was uh, one game you had a, a ten thousand dollars worth of pressure on. Absolutely. And <laughs> the thing is, we kids want to be who they see. So when I was growing up. You know, those were the people that I saw. I saw the neighborhood drug dealers. I saw, you know, the guys with money and jewelry and cars and things of that nature. So we want to be who we see, and we try. We kind of gravitate to those guys because um, obviously we we're, 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 we have access to them. I mean, they're they're in our neighborhoods. They're on our corners. We see them every day. We start to idolize those guys because we don't have that male figure, that male father in the home for us to look up to and know who to, you know, know what to be and know who to be and know how to be. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I found myself in some bad situations all because it was a guy that I looked up to who pretty much opened his arm to me and showed me some love, um, you know, some unconditional love. And that was, you know, just something that I liked and something that I had yearned for. Um, I just, I'm thankful that, you know, Slim, you know, cared enough about me to not pull me into his lifestyle, but to help me understand that the gifts that God had given me athletically that I could use that so much greater to do better than he was doing and that the, the, the things that he was doing, you know, it was just too much risk involved uh, for me to be involved with. And he was protecting me in that life. So um, even in a bad situation, some good turned out of that. Got to wrap it up with that great story, Keon Carpenter. By the way, your website one more time, Keon. It's a www.carpenter-house.org. Very good. And with that, uh, I would like to ask uh, Chris Kidd for his very final thoughts. And his website, by the way, is chriskidd.com. Fantastic information. And I think uh, a lot of this uh, can answer some of the, the issues with uh, professional athletes that are getting in trouble later on down the road. And uh, uh, the book uh, covered by Keon Carpenter, The Fatherless Athlete. I highly recommend everybody pick it up. Er, certainly every father, uh, mother, coach uh, <laughs> needs to get a hand uh, copy of this. Yep, no question about it. Thanks very much to bo both of you gentlemen. And when we come back tomorrow, we're going to have much more for you. I do want to remind you, best content here can be found over there at USDATOReview.com. You're listening to The Price of Business.